No, guys. It is an exciting Saturday night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. That would be Saturday night, September 10th, 2022. So speaking of excitement, we're going to have a really exciting chronicle of the collapse. We're going to go over to the good old Washington Post there and the those radical doomers over at the Washington Post. And this article kind of touching on one of the reasons when I first started becoming a doomer, uh, I don't know how many people realize this, I used to be a real estate investor and agent and whatnot, made my, <laughs> made my former money in real estate investment. <clears throat> and when I started thinking about, when I started hearing about sea level rise, uh, you know, my, my mind as a real estate investor started thinking, well, this doesn't sound good for coastal properties, you know, some of the most valuable real estate in this country and on the planet. Good Lord, billions and billions, probably trillions of dollars of, of real estate. And uh, if, if this is for real, you know, I mean, I figured this out 14 years ago that when the insurance companies stop writing flood insurance on these coastal properties, I mean, it's going to set off... A, uh, a tsunami, to coin a phrase, uh, a, a real estate crash that's going to make what happened in 2008, you know, look like a Sunday walk in the park. And I've never read it. Maybe I misunderstand it. You know, right now, FEMA, you know, the federal government, underwrites these flood insurance policies. And so... The only reason you can get a mortgage is if an insurance company insures the property, and the only reason that any insurance companies are insuring properties anymore is because they're underwritten by FEMA, you know, by the federal government. Can you say the taxpayers? And at some point, the taxpayers are, are, are going to get sick and tired uh, of basically you know, subsidizing these millionaires and these billionaires to be buying all of this expensive coastal property. So every time something happens to it, they can just get FEMA to pay off the insurance. And so no politician is going to yank the carpet out from under this because it would set off a, good God, what the economic crash that this would set off. This is a house of cards. It's been teetering. I mean, I was talking about this in 2008, that uh, at some point, <clears throat> at some point, the federal government is going to stop underwriting these policies for these coastal properties. When that happens, no insurance company is going to insure them when that happens, you will not be able to, to get a mortgage on these properties, on the, the you know, these multi-million dollar uh, properties. And uh, so, so what's, the, what's the other choice? I mean, the, it's going to be cash. They're going to be unsellable. They're going to be unmortgageable. And I know all of this sounds very dry. And what is this crazy hippie? talking about real estate investment. Uh, anyway, guys, before we head dive into the real estate, I just want to say uh, Brother Kirk is going uh, into the Doomer bling business, making a fine line of Doomer clothing. If you want to get some of this stuff, just email me at collapsechronicles at gmail.com and I will put you in touch with the Doomer Bling store, and you'll be seeing a lot more WASF shirts and hats and whatnot. Uh, 
at a beach near you. So take it away, Washington Post, and uh, tell us the background. Even though even the Washington, even Wapo doesn't go into what I'm talking about. They they dance around it. Uh, anyway. Rising seas could swallow millions of U.S. acres within decades. There you go. Uh, this is copyright by the Washington Post. The water is coming. Huh. There's no longer much doubt about that as scientists have increasingly documented how the warming of the planet has accelerated sea level rise along coasts around the world, but a new analysis published on Thursday by the research nonprofit Climate Central reveals a troubling dimension of the economic toll that could unfold in the U.S. as hundreds of thousands of homes, offices, and other privately owned properties slip below swelling tide lines over the next few decades. Here are five takeaways from the research about the people and places that stand to lose the most, the likely ripple effects and reasons the world must cut its emissions of greenhouse gases to eventually stem the rising waters. Oh yeah. No, like we're really going to turn this one around. Uh, but out of the five takeaways, I don't even see the the main takeaway that I'm talking about is this uh, collapse of, uh, you know, as I just said, the collapse of the flood insurance leading to the collapse of the, the mortgage industry, leading to the collapse of uh, of the most expensive real estate uh, in this country. You know, we're talking Mar-a-Lago kind of uh, real estate here. Okay, takeaway number one. <clears throat> sea level rise will shift coastlines and property lines. Researchers at Climate Central took scientific data on projected sea level rise as well as information about state tidal boundaries and combined that with records of more than 50 million, 50 million individual properties across hundreds of U.S. counties to identify parcels most likely at risk. Their conclusion, nearly 650,000, 650,000 individual privately owned parcels across as many as 4.4 million acres of land are projected to fall below changing tidal boundaries by 2050, you know, by the, before the end of a 30-year mortgage, and that land affected could swell to 9.1 million acres by 2100, according to Thursday's analysis, properties with a <clears throat> collective assessed value of $108 billion could be affected by the end of the century based on current emissions, but the authors noted because complete property values were not available for all counties, the actual total is likely to be far higher. It's, it, it's going to be a hell of a lot higher than, than any $108 billion. Anybody knowing anything uh, about real estate investment knows the assessed value of a property doesn't mean jack. It is a, a rule of thumb. Uh, there is no rule of thumb. I have heard two-thirds of what a property is worth, but uh, it's going to be a hell of a lot more than any $108 billion, you know, and that's in today's dollars. 
the changes also could come gradually at first, then quickly in many communities. Uh, the authors wrote, where structures are clustered in areas that historically are on safe ground, but once rising seas reach those densely developed elevations, quote, the number of affected buildings sharply increases. This is Don Bain, a senior advisor at Climate Central, who led the analysis. As the sea is rising, tide lines are moving up in elevation, upslope, and inland. People really have not internalized that yet. That, hey, I'm going to have something taken away from me by the sea, close quote. But of course, the people saying that, you know, they're multi-millionaires and billionaires. These people who can actually uh, afford coastal properties, uh, they're going to be left holding the bag. And I have to admit, a lot of this is going to be kind of funny to watch. These uh, I, I can hear these millionaires and billionaires bitching and moaning and whining, uh, you know, about not being able to get insurance on their properties and cussing out, uh, <clears throat> you know, FEMA and the federal flood insurance underwriters from, from uh, walking out on them because, uh, you know, how many times are the rest of us supposed to subsidize these guys? Anyway, takeaway number two, the Gulf Coast and Atlantic Coast stand to lose the most. It's no surprise that Louisiana, where the seas are swelling and land is sinking, faces a daunting loss of property in the years to come. Well, there's actually probably fewer millionaires and billionaires being affected by this along the Louisiana coast than any other coast. Uh, so there might actually be some real people affected uh, by this. Uh, <clears throat> the Climate Central Analysis estimated more than 25,000 properties totaling nearly two and a half million acres in Louisiana could fall entirely below tidal boundary lines by 2050, a number that far exceeds any other place in the nation. That would amount to 8.7% of Louisiana's total land area, the report found. So, I mean, we're talking about goodbye New Orleans. Just kiss New Orleans goodbye. Uh, 8.7% of Louisiana going below the tide line in the next 28 years. But other states also appear to face widespread threats. The top three at risk behind Louisiana are Florida, North Carolina, and Texas all of which have large swaths of low-lying, imperiled coastlines, while property across the southeast might face the most collective risks. Other states also have reasons for concern. New Jersey and good old New York, for instance, also stand to see thousands of properties fall below tide lines in coming decades. Same for Maryland, where which the research project sees more than 2,500 buildings impacted. The impacts of sea level rise are already evident as some communities face the prospect of retreat and a growing gr number grapple with the nuisance of, quote, sunny day flooding. This is William Sweet, an oceanographer at NOAA, uh, one of the nation's top scientists on sea level rise 
eventually such issues, issues will, quote, transition from something that is rare to becoming something that is normal. So now we get into more of the uh, esoteric knock-on effects that doomers never think about. So number three, it's not just about flooded homes, it's about eroding tax bases. Because uh, this, this is the other thing, uh, when, when all of this real estate market is destroyed, uh, is it, they're no longer going to be collecting taxes on this expensive property. Uh, the loss of homes and other properties, especially those along the waterfront, meaning, you know, paying, good God, I can imagine the tax bills on these oceanfront homes, is not just a tragedy for owners, it is a surefire way to erode the revenue municipal governments need to operate said Bain, quote, ultimately this is a local problem and a local story. We finance local government through our property taxes. And uh, when you have, well, $108 billion uh, worth of property, and meaning a lot more than that, off the tax rolls, uh, no, no longer generating tax revenue, uh, can you say Mad Max? Uh, if sea levels continue to rise unabated, that poses more than just a problem to beaches and condos that line the coast. It eventually will translate into fewer taxable properties and less money to fund schools and fire departments, fix roads, maintain sewers, and provide other essential services. Do you think so? Quoting the analysis, quote, diminished property values in a smaller tax base lead to lower tax revenue and reduce public services a potential downward spiral of disinvestment and population decline, reduced tax base and public services, and so on. And then uh, we get to number four, the potential ripple effects are vast. And this is kind of like uh, all of this other stuff. Uh, like the one that I'm talking about, never mentioned here. Eroding tax bases are a big problem, but hardly the only one. The study also found a litany of other complications that likely will result as sea levels itch higher and higher. Quoting the analysis, the legal and political ramifications of these changes are complex and will likely vary among locations. Those ramifications extend well beyond the loss of tax revenue as property owners object to paying taxes on submerged land. I bet. And, and then they're not going to be able to sell it either. I, I mean, this the entire coastal real estate market is on the is on the rocks as it were uh, beyond those initial shocks municipalities and individuals will also be forced to confront the significant calls for removing inundated structures and flooded septic tanks Governments could be on the hook for properties that get abandoned, adding additional expenses not covered by their budgets. But even before then, communities already are wrestling with the need to repair streets and roads damaged by flooding as well as overwhelmed or outdated sewer and water systems. Can you say Jackson, Mississippi? The authors 
write, quote, how city and county management teams respond to these risks, or if they respond at all, is material to the city's and county's future ability to repay debt and protect its credit rating. Good God, guys. And then uh, they go into their hopium about how we're going to turn this around. Yeah, so we're going to turn the seas around. Uh, the world's foremost scientists have found that given the carbon already built up in the atmosphere after generations of burning fossil fuels, the rate of sea level rise is increasing and will continue over the next several decades. Those findings are in line with a major report earlier this year from NOAA, which found that sea levels could rise along U.S. coastlines by roughly a foot between now and 2050, roughly as much change over the next three decades as over the past century. Uh, what remains undetermined is how communities across the U.S. prepare for the changes they know are coming. And, and uh, again, this whole sea level rise thing, I just did a rant a couple of days ago about this. Uh, and, you know, I mentioned that uh, video that I was listening to, uh, this interview with Peter Wadhams and Paul Beckwith. And, uh, you, you, you know, at least Paul Beckwith and Peter Wadhams are, 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 yeah, one foot in my ass. Uh, good Lord. I mean, what were, what was Peter saying? His best guess, I think he's saying seven feet by uh, the end of the seven feet, none of this one foot BS. Try, nobody knows. Uh, but looking at the Doomsday Glacier in Greenland, uh, this, this thing is, is you know, uh, Book Hermit's going to have a little egg on his face. Uh, come back in, in 30 years. Uh, I do need to find that quote. I found the video about where Peter Wadhams, I might have to just call Peter and ask him about that one quote. I need to listen to it again. Did he say that the IPCC is committing a crime against humanity for flat out lying through their teeth about the sea level rise uh, heading to a, uh, to a coastline near you? Uh, maybe we'll have to call Peter. Anyway, I gotta wrap this up. We're getting ready for the big Doomer shindig. Starting on Wednesday, I hope to have a Doomsday sermon tomorrow. If I can squeeze one in, uh, you might be checking in with watching the world burn watching the world burn. It's what we do at Collapse Chronicles. My guys.